And then in the Vatican, a third city-state was officially created in 1982. That city-state is called the District of Columbia and is located on 10 square miles of land in the heart of Washington. The District of Columbia flies its own flag and has its own independent constitution. Although geographically separate, the city-states of London, the Vatican, and the District of Columbia are one interlocking empire called Empire of the City. The flag of Washington's District of Columbia has three red stars, one for each city-state in the three-city empire. This corporate empire of three city-states controls the world economically through London's inner city, militarily through the District of Columbia, and spiritually through the Vatican. The Constitution for the District of Columbia operates under a tyrannical Roman law known as Lex Fori, which bears no resemblance to the U.S. Constitution. When Congress passed the Act of 1871, it created a separate corporate government for the District of Columbia. This treasonous act allowed the District of Columbia to operate as a corporation outside the original Constitution of the United States and outside of the best interests of American citizens. A sobering study of the signed treaties and charters between Britain and the United States exposes a shocking truth. The United States has always been, and still is, a British crown colony. King James I was famous not for just changing the Bible into the King James Version, but for signing the first charter of Virginia in 1606. That charter granted America's British forefathers a license to settle and colonize America. The Charter also guaranteed that future kings and queens of England would have sovereign authority over all the citizens and colonized land in America stolen from the Indians. After America declared its independence from Great Britain, the Treaty of 1783 was signed. That treaty specifically identifies the King of England as the Prince of the United States and contradicts the belief that America won the War of Independence. Although King George III of England gave up most of his claims over his American colonies, he kept his right to continue receiving payment for his business venture of colonizing America. If America had really won the War of Independence, they would never have agreed to pay debts and reparations to the King of England. When Congress passed the 13th Amendment to the Constitution, the U.S. President was made subservient to the King of England. The 13th Amendment is called the Title of Nobility Amendment and forbids U.S. Presidents and their officials from using royal titles like King or Prince or Baron. For some mysterious reason, the 13th Amendment, which was ratified in 1810, no longer appears on current copies of the Constitution. America's blood-soaked war of independence against the British bankrupted America and turned its citizens into permanent debt slaves of the King. In the War of 1812, the British torched and burned to the ground the White House and all U.S. government buildings and destroyed ratification records of the U.S. Constitution. One century later, a corrupt U.S. Congress committed the biggest theft in world history. They passed Paul Warburg's Federal Reserve Act in 1913, handing over America's gold and silver reserves and total control of America's economy to the Rothschild banksters. Most Americans still believe that the Fed or Federal Reserve is the government. It is not. The Fed is a privately owned banking system whose majority Class A shareholders are the Rothschilds, Warburgs, Kuhn and Loeb, J.P. Morgan, Rockefeller, Israel Seif, and the Lehman Brothers. This private banking cartel is the Fed and is never audited and never pays taxes. They print and design America's money, which displays their symbols of an Egyptian pyramid, a Masonic all-seeing eye, and the words, in God we trust. Who exactly is the God they trust? They also collect American taxpayers' money through the IRS. Then they loan it back again with interest to pay for roads, bridges, and other public. Most U.S. citizens believe that the United States is a country and that the President is the most powerful man on Earth. The United States is not a country. It is a corporation, and the President is President of the Corporation of the United States. He and his elected officials work for the corporation, not for the American people. Since the United States is a corporation, who owns the corporation of the United States? Like Canada and Australia, whose leaders are prime ministers of the Queen, and whose land is called Crown Land, 
The United States is just another crown colony. Crown colonies are controlled by the empire of three city-states. At the center of each city-state is a towering, phallic-shaped stone monument called an obelisk that points skyward. In D.C. city-state, the obelisk, known as the Washington Monument, was dedicated to Freemason George Washington by the Freemason Grand Lodge of the District of Columbia. The secret of brotherhood of Freemasons laid the Washington Obelisk's cornerstone in 1848 and contributed 22 Masonic memorial stones. 250 Masonic lodges financed the Washington Monument Obelisk, including the Knights Templar Masonic Order. At the heart of London city-state is a 187-ton, 69-foot-tall Egyptian obelisk called Cleopatra's Needle. It was transported from Egypt and erected on the banks of the River Thames. In Vatican City, another Egyptian obelisk towers high above St. Peter's Square, 